Welcome back, everyone. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I'm bringing you another edition of Rudy's Rant from Come On Now, the podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our page and give this video a thumbs up. And please do share it with your friends and family and colleagues and everyone that you know, because we are a building channel and we are trying to make it big here. I Come On Now, the podcast. Please also do uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast and on X at Come On Now Pod. Let's jump right in. Caitlin Clark has been bawling of late, but it's been very, very quiet from the national media. At this moment, she is riding a five game double double streak of points and assists. I bring this up because the record for the WNBA is six. Sue Bird never got to four. Diana Taurasi never got to five. The best point guards in the history of the WNBA have not gotten to four. The number one all time is Courtney Vandersloot. She did it for she did it six times in a row, six straight games. She also did a couple times four four straight games, but. Six is number one, five is now number two, and four is now number three. And Caitlin Clark is right now second all-time in double-double assist and points games consecutive in WNBA history. I bring this up because over the last month, we've been listening to this double-double streak of points and rebounds literally push down our throats every single day for the past three weeks at least as Angel Reese was getting these big double, double games with points and rebounds. There's not a point guard around. There's not a basketball player around that would say that getting a double, double with points and rebounds is harder than getting a double, double with points and assists. Why? Because assists actually require your teammates do something for you to get an assist. And over the last five games, if you actually want to go six games, she's actually had a double-double in points and assists six of the last seven games. So started off with 17 and 13 and six and four st- and four steals. Then she went for 15, seven and six. Then she went for 15, 12 and nine, one shy of a triple-double against Phoenix. Then 13, 11 and six against Vegas. Then 19, 13 and 12 against the Liberty for the first triple double for a rookie in WNBA history. Then she went 29, 13 and five against the mystics in the upset loss. And then just yesterday she went for 20, 13 and six. She had seven assists in that game at the end of the first quarter. <clears throat> People were talking about how maybe they were padding her stats up or what have you. No, she had seven in the first quarter. So, and they nearly lost the game. I mean, Christy Sides nearly blew the game with her actually horrific coaching. All that said, you're not hearing much about this from ESPN. You're not hearing much about this from all the pundits that have been so quick to claim Angel Reese is the rookie of the year. Despite over the last two games going five for 17 and three for 13 for a grand total of eight for 30 from the field. This is a 6-3 power forward who is struggles to make layups. I keep pointing these things out because <clears throat> these are the things that as basketball fans, as, as people who actually enjoy the sport beyond this dynamic that exists right now, that has unfortunately created a, I mean, my God, this is more, this is almost like a presidential election for Christ's sakes. Um, but it's sad because you know what? Both women are working very, very hard. And yeah, you might think I just took a veiled shot at Angel Reese, but I've taken I've taken this stance for duration of the last month and month or so, complimenting her on her work ethic, her grit, her grind, her will, her, her how hard she plays. And I will always I commend that. I do. I absolutely do. I she she has a knack for getting rebounds. Even you know she has a knack for it. even with the the fluffiness of some of the numbers. She has a knack for getting rebounds, and she's a great rebounder. But she's not Caitlin Clark. <clears throat> she's not on that skill level. Caitlin Clark is 
while her percentage doesn't show she's the best shooter in the league, she's the best shooter in the league. She's the best passer in the league. And if you look within a, probably after the next game, she'll probably be, probably be leading the league in assists. I think right now she's still a hair off of the lead. She's second in the league in assists. Um, <clears throat> but she has, you know, when people miss layups and miss wide open shots that she creates for them, that's why getting assists is harder than getting rebounds. Double doubles on assists is harder than double doubles on points and, and, and rebounds. Yeah, she's at 7.8. Alyssa Thomas is at 7.9. So at the moment, she is second in the league in assists. She is 14th in scoring. And, and she is 19th in rebounds. And she is 11th in steals. Sorry, yeah, 11th in steals. And then um, what is that? Do -do 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 -do. And she's 14th in blocks as a guard. She has the most blocks from any guard in the, in the WNBA. These are the facts. Why aren't they talking about this assist to turn uh, this assist to uh, points double double? Why isn't this a big comp? Why hasn't it, why has this not been a big conversation? She's also now tenth in efficiency in the WNBA. Why isn't this talked about like this Angel Reese streak was? I'd love to know. I truly would love to know why it's not in that same conversation. It shows such a slanted narrative that exists that ESPN has been pushing and pushing and pushing. And maybe they're doing it because they're trying to make this a race. They're trying to make it interesting. They're trying to create a narrative. They're trying to make you watch. And that's always a possibility. They probably are doing that in some capacity. I have to believe that. I cannot believe that there's so many intelligent basketball minds that all think that this is <laughs> like this is even remotely close. <clears throat> Caitlin Clark right now has got five straight double double doubles, points, and assists. And in the next game, they play who do they play? Uh do they play tomorrow? Uh, they play tomorrow. <clears throat> they play they play at Minnesota tomorrow at 4 p.m. If she's to do that against the Minnesota Lynx, who are one of the best teams in the WNBA, um, that'll be pretty darn big for her. And it'll tie the record with Courtney Vandersloot. And is there a game before the All-Star break for them? Yes, there is. On the 17th, they play the, at the Dallas Wings. So Will there be a hype about her breaking this potentially break? I'm not saying she's going to break the record. I, I'm tired of breaking. I don't know. But the point was there was such a build-up hype to the other one for points and rebounds. Why does that build-up hype not exist right now for me, SPN? From the Monica McNutts, from the Carolyn Pecks, from the Chinia Gumakes, from the Drea Carters, from all these talking heads who have said nothing but generally negative things or dismissed the accomplishments of Caitlin Clark and push them down while trying to prop up Angel Reese to create some type of actual race for Rookie of the Year. I'll tell you right now, if Caitlin Clark drops another triple-double this year, this is not even a conversation. I mean, I mean, it wouldn't even be a conversation. It's not a conversation right now to me as it is. But if she was to drop another, another, another triple-double, it would be crazy. But if she's to break this record, so tell me now, what, 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 what will you say? What will you say now? What will you say now? I think it's really insane that this has not been talked about. Obviously, there isn't the buildup because the number is not as high. But we're at five. That happened yesterday. Are we going to talk about it? Is ESPN going to write a story about it? I'm on ESPN right now, and let's see. Is there a story about Caitlin Clark being one shy of the record? Let me check. Let's check it out because I doubt it. I do see... On top headlines, Reese's historic double-double streak ends at 15. Let's go to the WNBA page to see if the WNBA page says it. It does not. It actually says Reese's double-double record is now 14 games. Asia Wilson posts first career 2020 game and Aces wins. 
Why are they talking about Asia Wilson more? Why doesn't this? Why don't the same people who are bloviating about Angel Reese talk about Asia Wilson more? Asia Wilson is putting up a monster season. She's the league MVP. Liberty beat, rally to beat Sky as Reese extends streak. Again, nothing here. Why is there nothing here about the the, the five game streak of Caitlin Clark? We can even go look at the scoreboard from yesterday <clears throat> after they won the game. I'm curious to see if they even mentioned it in the in the write up from ESPN. Let's take a look. Let's take a let's see here anywhere. No. It does not mention that Caitlin Clark has now done it five straight games. It does not mention that Caitlin Clark is now one game off the WNBA record of six. There is zero mention in e on ESPN of this. So why do you think that is? I'll let you answer the question. Leave your, leave your thoughts in the comments because I'd love to hear the opinions of people that are watching this and understand. Why isn't this being talked about for Caitlin Clark? Why isn't ESPN blowing this up? Because this is just as big, if not bigger. Assists are harder than rebounds. We know this. We know this. The record, I just wanted to check this out before I go. The record, okay, so the double-double is six with Courtney Vandersloot. Let's see what happens if she breaks it, to, if she ties it tomorrow, and see. Let, let's see how the, the world reacts. Let's see, you know, let's see if ESPN makes it a story. Because my guess is it, it probably won't. My guess is they probably won't. Because it would smash their narrative. This is a it's a big game tomorrow for the Liberty. They're playing on the road at Minnesota. They they love to get this win. I'm sure it will be very beneficial to their to their race to not to avoid being an eight seed after Chicago lost today. Now they are the eight seed. They are nine and fourteen, and Indiana's ten and fourteen. Half game better. I think you're pretty much going to have both of these teams make the playoffs at this point. Um, really, it's about if uh, Indiana can really catch up to Phoenix and get in that sixth spot, because otherwise they're going to play Connecticut in the first round and probably get bounced. Um, <laughs> unless the WNBA finds a way to make them stick around longer. Anyhow, that's about it for now. I'm wondering what your, what your thoughts are. Please be sure to leave a, leave a comment and let me, let me know what you think. Come on now.